Yo, what's up squads? Welcome back to Regal Randy's Ranch. I've had a ton of crazy stuff going on. It just hit 70 degrees outside for the first time this year, and I've been busy preparing for the outdoor grows, as well as some other really cool stuff. <laughs> that will be featured on my main channel. RegalRandy.com is live and I'm already developing version two, which will come out later this year. And we partnered with two new companies, one of them being the sponsor of this video, Viper Spectra. They hooked us up with two XS 1500 Pro LED grow lights. So let's get started with the unboxing. And for those of you who are asking what type of knife this is, it's a Spyderco 2G10. All the links for everything are in the description, including an 8% discount code for these lights. The 8% stacks with whatever discount Viper Spectra has, so make sure to use code RegalRandy at checkout for extra savings if you're planning on grabbing these. The first thing I see is the instruction manual, but we'll put that aside for now. Viper Spectra also sent some stickers, and those are going in my collection. Then the rest is pretty standard. The light, driver, two hooks, a daisy chaining cable, and a power cord. Oh, they did include two adjustable hangers as well. The thing is pretty beefy. It weighs 6 pounds and it's 14.2 inches long by 11.4 inches wide. One of these fits perfectly in a 2x2, so two of them will provide the maximum coverage of a 2x4 for flowering. And that's what we're going to be growing in. Although to find out what we're growing, you'll have to come back next episode and see for yourself. Before we hang these up in the tent, let's do a quick overview of these lights. It's made out of aluminum and this whole back panel is a heatsink. It has a Sosin 150 watt driver, so we'll be pulling 300 watts with both of these in the 2x4. There's a switch on the side to change it from single to multi-unit use. And these two RJ ports on the top are for daisy chaining them together. You can have up to 20 units chained together. On the other side, there's a dimming switch with five positions. 5%, 25, 50, 75, and 100%. And if we flip it over, we'll get a look at some of the first major differences, which are the three PCBs with the optical lenses. The XS 1500 Pro version is definitely an upgrade from last year's model. The new optical lens uses a silicon sphere to focus the light better, and its PAR ratings clearly hit the corners deeper than without. This means at 11 inches, you're getting the maximum PAR output which is 942 micromoles. Although I'd be careful of putting them that close as some plants are sensitive to light and will burn. The Pro version also uses different diodes than its predecessor. While the original only uses Samsung LM301B diodes, the Pro uses LM281s for its blue and white LEDs and Osram diodes for its infrared and deep red lights. Osram is the better infrared diode but there is a heavy debate on which Samsung diode is better. While I'm not going to go in depth into which diode is better, I'll link some more information on diodes in the Discord and in the description. I will share one pro tip, which is that the 301H uses an anti-sulfurization layer to protect the LEDs from sulfur used in fertilizers, which is very corrosive and can kill the circuit. Now obviously installing these is simple. You just attach the adjustable hangers to the metal hooks. Then I run the power wire through the top of the tent's ventilation holes and into a digital timer. I like to buy larger carabiners because the hooks on the adjustable hangers aren't big enough to go around the tent poles. I could loop the hook around onto itself or use a zip tie, but I had some of these lying around. I hung the other light the same way, but the cord was pulling the light perpendicular, so I ended up adding a zip tie anyways. Next I daisy chain them together using the supplied RJ11 cord and set one of the lights to remote. This will allow it to be controlled by the main light. The RJ plugs have these caps and I'd hang on to them to keep dust or moisture from getting into the socket when you're not linking the lights. Make sure when connecting the lights together you plug the RJ11 cord into the slot mark output on the main light and on the slot mark input on the zombie light. 
Then adjust the height of the light to whatever suits your needs. I'm putting these down a bit because I'll be planting some new seeds in the next video. If any of this is confusing, the user's manual has diagrams and some written explanations of how to do all this. They also have some par readings at different heights and give suggested height and light intensity based on what type of plants you'll be growing. I'm pretty excited to start the next grow and to test out these lights. Remember, we always have a bunch of giveaways going on, so join the Discord and go to the giveaways channel to enter as many as you'd like, or download some free guides about growing, washing, pressing, and everything related to that sticky flower. Thanks for stopping by, we'll see you in the next one. Peace out, squaws.